Hello, everyone, and welcome to our September Author Spotlight. This month, with the commemoration of the 20th anniversary of September 11th, we're focusing on how we share this date in American history with our young readers. All of our reading recommendations this month are geared towards helping children learn about the heroic actions, of service members, first responders, and the citizens that live in our communities. Joining us today are Stacy Queen, our Public Programs Manager, and Sean Rubin, the Eisner Award-nominated author-illustrator of This Very Tree, a story of 9-11 resilience and growth. We'll start with Stacy. I know she's got some great questions lined up for us today. Yes, thank you, Megan. So Sean, tell us a little bit about yourself. What was it like growing up in New York City and did you visit downtown Manhattan often? And what do you remember about the towers? Yeah, well, uh, thank you so much for having me. That's, that's a great question. The uh, Growing up in New York City uh, was amazing because there were so many different kinds of people there from all over the world. And that's really in a lot of ways what I still remember so much about. Uh, being in New York when I was a kid. And so I grew up in Brooklyn, which is in a different part of New York, but we would go down to Manhattan and we'd visit the uh, the Twin Towers. Uh, people really like to go shopping there. Um, you know, you go up to the observation deck and um, I know I did at least one class trip, I think it was in kindergarten. And uh, it was just always, it was always something that you kind of knew about. It was always in the background. When we would drive, I think I mentioned this in an author's note, but when we would drive to the city or to another part of New York or New Jersey, uh, you could always see the Twin Towers coming out of the water. Mm -hmm. um, so I just remember those buildings always having been there, um, which of course is when you're a kid that they would come down and the way they, they came down how they did um, was just very impactful. So this book tells us about the incredible story of 9-11 and the survivor tree. So mm -hmm. tell us about that story and what exactly is the survivor tree? Right. Well, the survivor tree is a calorie pear tree or some people call them Bradford pears. They used to be very popular to, to grow in cities. A number of them were planted at the World Trade Center in the 1970s mm -hmm. uh, when it was first built. When the towers came down, uh, of course, they, they came down on top of those of those trees because that they were planted in the plaza. And one of the trees, which is now the survivor tree, uh, actually lived. It lived through the towers collapse and it lived through being buried for about a month. It was pulled out in October, uh, about a month after the attacks. Mm -hmm. And it was the last living thing to be pulled out of the rubble after 9-11. So it was, it's very special for that reason. And the people that pulled it out, they, they didn't know if it was going to survive. I mean, again, it was alive when they found it. So what they did was they sent it to the Bronx. There's a uh, a park there called Van Cortland Park and a nursery that specializes in taking care of plants and trees that are kind of having difficulty that belong to the park department uh, in the city called uh, the Arthur Ross Nursery. Mm -hmm. And uh, the people there uh, nurse the tree back to health. And they, they didn't know, again, like, every, bit by bit this happened. They weren't sure how long it was going to live, if it was going to last the winter, if it was going to bud in the spring, but it did. It grew, they took care of it for about 10 years and they returned it to ground zero. Well, now the memorial uh, forest so that it could be part of the memorial uh, around what used to be the Twin Towers and is now the, the new World Trade Center. Wow, that is, it's really an incredible story. Yeah, um, really but as you're writing and illustrating the book, did you have to fall back on kind of some of your memories um, of the towers? Yes, absolutely. I mean, because what we discussed, remembering the towers when I was little, I, I, I tried to draw sort of a little kid looking at that area. Uh, the World Trade Center wasn't the kind of place, or the Twin Towers, I should say, was it really weren't the kind of place where a lot of kids were, because it was uh, a lot of office buildings and, and people involved in the financial sector. Just there's not a lot of kids in, involved in that ever. So I kind of had to think about it as sort of like the kid sort of looking up at these huge buildings. And, and really, I mean, they impressed me so much. So I, I tried to kind of remember how I felt looking up at these things. I, I love drawing uh, New York City, Manhattan in particular, and um, I do rely on memory a lot when I draw it because I actually like to draw it kind of the way it used to look when I was a kid because it's always changing. So that was, that was a special that was a special thing uh, for me about making the book. The other thing that was really important to me was that my wife helped me a lot. My wife is a, a clinical psychologist. She spent about a year in um, the Medical University of South Carolina at the National uh, Crime uh, Victim Trauma Center. Hmm. Um, what they do there is they 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 teach uh, psychologists how to help people that have experienced uh, different kinds of trauma. So I asked her at some point what 
she thought if the tree were to be a, a patient that came into her practice who had experienced 9-11 the way the tree experienced it, so to speak, what would the tree say? What would she say yeah. to the tree? What would you expect? And so we actually wrote all that down, um, including ideas like the tree would have a job. Uh, the tree would feel sort of hesitant to go back mm -hmm. to um, lower Manhattan, even though it kind of wanted to. The The important thing there was just that she was really able to show me uh, when you talk about trauma, when you think about it, to not really say things like, oh, you know, you're stronger for the experience or, mm -hmm. you know, thing that this happened because that's not really that's not the point at all of course it's always better that trauma doesn't happen but at the same time um the tree like many people are able to kind of move beyond that and uh, find a new normal so that's really kind of what the book was about she helped me a lot uh to uh find that story and uh figure out the best way to tell it yeah that's really a, a beautiful collaboration between you and your wife and it, it, it comes across um just uh, perfectly for the book. You mentioned in your author's notes um, that it was a pear tree and it was uprooted in a violent storm while it was actually living in the Bronx. Um, what do you think this teaches readers and especially young readers about recovery from tragedy? Well, I kind of wish I could have put that in the in the actual book and not just the note. But, it, it, you know, when you write a book, you need kind of an arc. So something, you know, something bad happened and then it kind of moved beyond that. And we kind of had to keep telling that story. Um, so it became sort of more of a footnote. I think it's tempting to think that just because something has happened and you kind of you can get over it, that nothing else will ever happen again. You know, I, I was talking to my grandmother and she had she'd seen World War Two, the Korean War, Vietnam, all, all these different wars. And, uh, it, you know, trying to get her perspective, um, you know, and she just said, you know, these things keep happening. But I, I do think it's important to realize that, uh, you know, just because something happens, it doesn't mean you can't get through it. But it doesn't mean something else might not happen, but you'll get through that, too. I think it's very easy to think that, you know, OK, we're done. Our work is over. But in reality, history keeps going. Um, we're all part of it. And we always have more work to do. And, you know, that kind of really speaks to the work that we do here at the National mm -hmm. Veterans Memorial Museum. And we talk about kind of these tough moments of conflict in American history and in world history. And we, we wanted to share those stories with visitors as well as um, younger audiences and working with K through 12 students. So that's exactly um, part of the mission of what we do here. And kind of as we close out the conversation, Sean, um, what do you hope that this book brings to families as we think about resilience? And how can we kind of continue this conversation um, with younger audience about resilience and, and overcoming tragedy? I think a lot of people are stronger than they realize, which is not to say that if you're struggling with something and you're not kind of, you know, there yet, or you haven't been able to work through a lot of it yet, that, there, that there's something wrong with you. Of course there isn't. But at the same time, um, I, I think that we often don't realize how resilient we are. And so when something happens, there may be a, an initial reaction or initial thought that, okay, this, this may have ruined my life or I'll never get over this. And um, I mean, my wife is a doctor and she sees a lot of people and she does a lot of research. I can tell you that that's, it's, that's very unlikely. What's much more likely is that you you will get, you will be able to work through it. That's a great thing. And again, I, you don't say that to put pressure on people who are dealing with um, who are dealing with tragedy or dealing with trauma. But uh, we do want to share that in order to provide hope, uh, which is that you, you know you will move beyond your trauma. Um, your trauma does not need to define you. Mm -hmm. um, and um, yeah, I, I just don't know how much that story gets out nowadays. Um, I don't know. I don't know why, but. Uh, we, you know, that was one of the things that really attracted uh, me to this project. It was, I thought, a really uh, simple way of sort of, you know, teaching kids that idea that, you know, the tree, uh, it, it has a new job, but at the same time, it, you know, it has a job. It didn't, it didn't stay in the nursery. It, it kind of went back to doing a version of what it was doing. And it was, it was able to kind of, you know, uh, it was, yeah, I was able to push through. I think we're all, um, we're all still working through kind yeah. of this moment in time. And certainly your book, This Very Tree, the story of 9-11 and resilience and regrowth is kind of the perfect story that helps us um, as we reflect back on um, this, what this, the 20th year anniversary of 9-11, um, your book is certainly um, a great resource for, for young audiences and families. So thank you for your time, Sean. Thank you.
Wonderful. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, uh, Stacy. Thanks, Sean. And to everyone again for tuning in and joining us today to hear this incredible story of resilience and growth. As a New Yorker myself, this story really touched my heart, and I'm so glad that we can connect our younger audience to this book. Head to nationalvmm.org for more education-related content and share with us what you're reading this month on social media with the hashtag NVMMReads. Thanks very much. Thanks, everybody.